Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm your host, Bob DeMarco. Coming up, a list of Blade Show 2021 winners, some interesting new Civivis, and my Blade Show haul. That's right, I spent 100% more dollars than I promised I would spend before I left. Uh, I, I guess uh, that's not weakness, I just should have known. Uh, that's what everyone was telling me anyway. It was a big giant haul full of self-justifiers, so I was, I was right in the right place. Uh, but before we get to that, of course, this week's pocket check. And um, well, my folder today, my front right pocket folder, is kind of half Blade Show uh, acquisition. Uh, today I was carrying my TRM Adam, a wonderful and beloved knife, uh, but this one, you might notice, is wearing brand new scales. Uh, I went up to the TRM uh, booth and saw Marianne Halpern, and I met uh, Les Halpern for the first time. That was great. It was great to see them both. Uh, they're such awesome people making awesome knives. I also saw their new knife, the Shadow, um, amazing new Barlock knife. Uh, but anyway, uh, I got these uh, Burlap Micarta uh, contoured milled wing pattern handle scales. And when I say I got them, what I really mean is Marianne gave them to me and I thought that was so cool. I was sitting there, I was dragging my feet. I was like, eh, I don't know which one I want. And she's like, uh, she, you know, she said, well, you've done a lot for us. So I'd like to offer you a set of scales. And I was like, oh, I know which one I want. <laughs> and I went right for these, which uh, happened to be the most expensive ones. But that was nothing that had nothing to do with how or why I chose them. I'm a sucker for my carta. I love burlap my carta. And to see burlap my carta with this very, very fine milling in it was interesting to me because you look at the, well, I'm going to call it weave. You look at the weave of, uh, burlap. It's so, you know, kind of thick and wide open. And it seems like it wouldn't mill nicely, but man alive, did they get a beautiful milling pattern in this. As you can see, it's slightly contoured in this direction. And then you have this radiating sort of wing pattern coming off from the front. So it really has dressed up this knife beautifully. Um, I just replaced it with my recent uh, acquisition, the um, the green British Racing Green G10 contoured wing pattern handle. So now I have three different handle scales for this knife, and that's one of the great things about the TRM knives, the Three Rivers Manufacturing knives, is that they build them to be so easy to swap the scales. I mean, all you have to do is remove this screw and this screw on this side, and then the two pocket screws and this screw. You don't have to disassemble the whole knife. Uh, I wish more makers would do that because uh, they seem to do really well on selling scales because it's so easy to swap out scales. It's like putting on a, a new tie or a new shirt or something. It's that easy that uh, I'm surprised more makers don't actually do that. Uh, but Anyway, they do, and it's one of their unique selling propositions, and I'm, uh, it was very, very awesome to meet them uh, at, at the Blade Show. Second today is my, well, I've been carrying this one a lot. It's, it is new-ish, but now that I have all these new Ur knives, it seems less new. Okay, and I've carried it every day since I've gotten it, pretty much, except for one, and uh that was swapped out with something else you'll see later on. But this is my Kramer Custom Knives Voodoo. Uh, it is such an easy carrying uh, EDC fixed blade. Uh, and of course, it comes replete with a bit of menace. Look at that upswept Persian style clip point blade. Uh, I asked Eric Kramer to sharpen the back edge as I always do when there's a choice or whenever there's an option. And uh, he did a beautiful job. This thing is already very thin, both in handle and in uh, stock, a blade stock. And he hollow ground this blade to a near, well, I don't know. I don't even know what the measurement is, but it's incredibly thin, especially as it tapers down towards the edge. I really love this knife. I carry it uh, in the waistband on my right hip 
at about three o'clock and uh, it's ready to pull out at a moment's notice in this grip, in this sort of Pical style grip. And then, you know, to cut my bagel, I just switch the grip, you know, and cut. So this is what I was carrying today, the uh, TRM Atom with the new, with the new um, wing style burlap micarta handles and the Kramer Custom Voodoo. Awesome pair, both very thin, both very slicey, uh, but you'll be very happy and relieved to know that, you know, different grinds, different styles of knives. So uh, there was no repetition there today. Uh, you know I can't stand that. Yeah, I can't carry two knives of the same blade style or of the same make even or of the same locking style or, or anything like that. Otherwise, it, it makes me nervous. It sticks in my craw. So Blade Show. How was Blade Show, you're wondering? Well, if you didn't see the, uh, the Blade Show Sunday um, podcast, I, uh, Jim and I did it remotely, more remotely than usual. Uh, over the space of 500 or so miles, and uh, I recorded it from, well, he recorded it, and I was saying words out of my face hole from my uh, hotel room in Atlanta, and everything was super fresh in my mind, and um, I felt like, <laughs> uh, well, uh, not like that. I was going to say, I felt like after my wedding, when I was trying to recall every moment, it wasn't quite like that, certainly, but... Uh, but there was a lot of, uh, you know, I was kind of in a whirl because that whole weekend was spent meeting people that I have grown to feel close to online through this whole knife thing. And uh, some of them, many of them I had interviewed and spoke with solidly for an hour. And really, I mean, how often do you have a solid one hour conversation? with a total stranger. It doesn't happen that often, at least in my life. So each time I talk to someone or interview someone like that, um, I feel closer to them. Same thing has happened with people who've come on Thursday Night Knives uh, right here, Thursday night, uh, 10 p.m. Eastern, uh, live stream every week. Uh, I feel close to them and to meet them in person, like, like Ben Belkin of Jack Wolf Knives. Finally got to meet him and hung out at his booth for a little while, his table, saw his... Um, all of the uh, his he brought six prototypes with him of his new riot made uh himself designed beautiful slip joints my god beautiful so when they start um producing those and rolling those out i have no doubt jack wolf knives is gonna shoot into the stratosphere you know they had uh, a little crowd around their table uh all day long. Every time I looked over there all weekend, I'd, I'd look over, kind of check in, see what was going on. And he had quite a number of people around all the time. People were very enthusiastic about his stuff. Um, so yeah, that, that was cool. And then meeting people like Ernest Emerson, um, whom I've had on the show a number of times. Um, I, I think my dog might be scratching at the door, but he's going to have to wait. Uh, I met Ernest Emerson. It was great to shake his hand. And I went to a, a seminar he had, um, a very cool little seminar that I talked about on the last show. Uh, it, was, it was great to meet him. Um, I met Jimmy Slash. I met Greg Medford. I met Lance Abernathy. I met, uh, and then a number of people that uh, I've been trying to get in touch with who maybe are too busy to respond or, or what have you. But uh, I met a number of people that... I'm going to interview. And that was exciting too. Um, someone who just popped into my mind because I'm looking at a tomahawk over here, wink, wink, know what I mean, uh, was uh, Ryan Johnson of RMJ, uh, who really, really popularized uh, the tactical uh, tomahawk kind of made in the modern uh, sort of uh, paradigm. Uh, when was it? Maybe 2010 or sometime during uh, the 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 hot and heavy maybe 2008 actually uh times in in of iraq where soldiers were were banging down his door to get his tomahawks had a great conversation with him so anyway my, my point is it is true what people say like you go there for the knives and then you go back for the people it was really great to be around you know several thousand people who feel similarly or the same about knives as as you so um, if it's in your plans or if it's you're sitting on the fence about going next year, I would suggest you go. I would suggest you save up. 
uh, not only for the trip, but for the being there and being around so many temptations. I mean, you're going to want to, um, you're going to want to buy stuff. And, and the funny thing is, is I totally forgot that part of Blade Show is not only premiering new items and new models, but it's also giving people deals. So there were a lot of deals to be had. And I kind of felt immediately like, why didn't I, why didn't I think of this? I was so concerned with the logistics and getting down there and how are we going to create a show out of this that uh, I, I didn't budget well. But now I have that little um, arrow in my, well, now I have that bit of knowledge and uh, I'm passing that along to you. If you plan to go to Blade Show and it's a first time like it was my first time, uh, start now budgeting and putting a little money aside, not only for the trip, uh, you know, because when you're sort of a captive audience in a convention center or even in that part of town, uh, you know, things are more expensive. So uh, budget for that and budget for uh, acres and acres of really sweet knives. Booths by manufacturers mostly, and then tables and tables and tables of custom knives. So cool. Man, uh, I don't know if I can give it adequate, uh, uh, my adequate props to it, but it was just great. I loved it. I loved it. And to everyone that I met, um, a lot of viewers too, and a lot of uh, fellow YouTubers, man, it was great meeting you all to a person, to a person. Uh, yeah. So anyway, there you have it. Now, speaking of Blade Show, let's just roll down the list of Blade Show winners, because unfortunately, while I was there, I wasn't around when all of this was announced. I think it was announced on Sunday. And even, even if it were announced on Saturday, I was just running around. I swear I was like a dog, uh, you know, with shiny things, just moving from one spot to another. So uh, everyone there uh, who showed up and who showed off their work deserves some, some bit of uh, recognition. I didn't see really, I didn't see any false notes. Uh, the people making knives out there, they're making radically different styles and such. Some crazy stuff, but all with, uh, with passion and heart. Uh, but this year's winners, Knife of the Year, Fox Saturn. Uh, American Made Knife of the Year, the Case Marilla. I think that's one of their new flippers. Uh, imported Knife of the Year, Fox Saturn, again. Uh, most Innovative American Design, V Knives Metal Tech. I believe that is a multi-tool. Uh, v Knives, um, yeah, they had some really cool stuff there. I, I remember checking out their booth. Most Innovative Imported Design, Mazarin Dido, D-I-D-O-T. I'm, I'm assuming it's Dido, maybe D-Dot. But the interesting thing is that Mazarin could not make it into the country from Italy. And they were situated right next to Andrew Demko Knives, the, the Demko Knives booth. So um, they were kind of, um, you know, uh, Mazarin reached out to Demko and asked if they could, you know, kind of keep an eye out on their booth because their stuff made it through, just the human beings didn't. And uh, so kind of in the 11th hour, the Demko crew, uh, 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 you know, stood up and, and said, sure, we'll, we'll, we'll help you out how we can. Um, Best Buy, the Wii Civivi Elementum. Uh, that's been very popular this past year. Collaboration of the year, Mazarin Solar. Unfamiliar. Manufacturing Quality Award, Heretic Knives. Heretic Knives, uh, believe, started by um, uh, by the son of the guy who started uh, Microtech. Sorry, his name. I know you're all yelling at your radio. Your radios. None of you are listening. You're all yelling at your uh, at your device his name, and it's not coming to me, an Italian name, um, of course, uh, but I just can't remember. But Heretic Knives, really, really cool. Uh, they have a really cool new dagger out and a bunch of beautiful autos. Investor Collector Knife of the Year, Protec Malibu Titanium Ultimate Custom. That Malibu is just super, super popular. And I had a chance to meet in person 
Dave from from there, um, Dave Wattenberg, and what a charming guy. Accessory of the year, the Ulti Clip Ultimate Carry Solutions. Uh, I bought a thing from Ulti Clip, just one of their regular Ulti Clips, after I bought a fixed blade knife, a very sweet one that didn't come with a clip. I was like, hmm, I wonder if there's a place in Atlanta where I could buy a clip for my knife. Oh, I'm a blade show, and I sought these guys out, and they hooked me up. Kitchen knife, the Benchmade Meat Crafter model, fifteen hundred fifty oh one. The Meat Crafter. Who doesn't love that name? Publisher Award, J. Bruce Voiles. Industry Achievement Award, Willie Knives. And then next, uh, we have. Uh, I'm just going to rattle off the custom show knife winners. Uh, so that you know, the Hugh Bartrug best of show was Jordan Lamoth. Best fighter, Josh Fisher. I wish I saw that. Best Bowie. Wish I saw that too. Steven Rapp. Best folder, Javier Vogt. Uh, best new maker, Princeton Wong. Best collaboration, no winner. Every collaboration was awful this year. Just kidding. Uh, uh, let's see. Best art knife, M. Deletsky. Most innovative design, David R. Davis. Best Damascus, Shane Carter. Best sword, what a great category. Wish I saw this one. Uh, Alexiev Ilya. And then who do we have next here? We have um, best sword, oh, got him. Uh, the Yvan Vachon, best miniature, no winner this year. Best fixed blade, Jordan Lamoth. Best tactical fighter, Brian Brown. Uh, a familiar name, the Tony Bowes Best Slip Joint, which is a new award. Luke Swenson, best of the rest this year, went to Chuck Gadritis and his Marlin Knife, which I got a chance to heft myself and check out up close and talked a bit to uh, Chuck. Uh, you can check that out on the previous podcast. Best Utility Hunter, Eric McCrite, Best Kitchen Knife, Bill Burke, and Best Handle Design, no winner, because they were all winners. Isn't that lovely? What a cool, what a cool show, and what a great um, uh, organization Blade Magazine seems to be putting this on every year. And uh, I know with the help of planners and such, but the way they do that award, I think, is all these awards. I think is great because it really uh, gives people a chance to, you know, be recognized for their hard work and their passion. And also, you know, who doesn't like a little competition? It raises raises all boats, right? So uh, coming up, we're going to have uh, one story in Life Knife, Knife Life News, uh, the uh, couple of Civivis that are out. You know, there are a lot of new knives out right now, uh, but there are three new Civivis that really um, piqued my interest, and one of them I held at the Blade Show, so we'll talk about those for a minute or two. And then we're going to get to my uh, hauls, my acquisitions uh, right here. Uh, on the Knife Junkie podcast. Um, but first, help support the show on Patreon, please. Uh, it would really, really help. Uh, you get Knife Junkie stickers, a mention on the podcast, early access to the Sunday interview and midweek supplemental shows, monthly knife giveaways, and we're cooking up a few extra exclusive opportunities. Hmm? Uh, your support really helps keep the show going, uh, infrastructure and all all the other ways, and we really appreciate it. So check us out on Patreon and seeing what helping us can get you. The quickest way to get there is by going to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. That's the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast, and now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. Okay, Civivi, so you know, the we high value brand. I was about to say budget, but they're not budget. You pick up a Civivi. They're amazing knives, amazing knives and uh, plentiful. The Civivi uh, counter was, was, was very full of knives. Let me, let me put it that way. But the one that drew me in, I mean, I saw it from, from uh, quite a distance and uh, I didn't know that this was coming out, but I was like, what is that? That looks like it might be designed by, and I was upon it by the time I had the, the name Terzuola out. And yes, check this out. This is a new knife uh, that's coming from, from uh, Civivi. It is a fixed blade. You don't see too many fixed blades from Civivi, but this is the Bob Terzuola designed Tamaishi. Tamashi 
tamashii. I think in Japanese you pronounce everything, and there are two eyes at the end of this. So I think it's tamashii. And uh, man, look at that beautiful uh, sort of traditional upswept Japanese tanto style blade on this very Terzawolian um, shaped handle. Uh, this is actually contoured G10, and you can tell that the tang is, uh, you know, there's a there's a tang sunk in there. Uh, but when you pick it up and grip it, it's it's G10 all around. Or, uh, yeah, G10 all around. Now, truth be told, I didn't look to see if it was a seam and they're sandwiched there or if it's a block that's milled out and then they they uh, stick it in there and put the put the decorative pin through there. Uh, I, I am assuming the former, but this, this is a beautiful knife. This is a 4.07-inch uh, blade, which to me is the perfect size. I love the 4-inch blade on a folder or a fixed blade that you're planning on carrying. I think it's a great EDC fixed blade length, especially considering I don't EDC my fixed blades in my pocket almost ever. Uh, it's always, almost always in the, in the waistband, you know, or on the belt. Well, it's never on the belt. I'll be honest. It's always in the waistband. Um, because I don't live somewhere where you can walk around with a knife on your belt. Unlike blade show where everyone was walking around with a blade on their belt. It was so cool. So cool. But anyway, this Tamashi, uh, from Terzuola and, and, um, Savivi might be something that I have to get. And, you know, it was kind of interesting that it's a Savivi because we all know Bob Terzuola as making some of the most premier uh, tactical, custom tactical folders out there. And uh, he's basically the granddaddy of the whole concept. And you would think that it would be a Wii production somehow because uh, there's more um, prestige to the Wii brand. But man, you know, the same the same energy goes into a Civivi that goes into a Wii pretty much. Uh, it's just kind of a difference of details and and amount of, or uh, materials and amount of details, that kind of thing. And since this is a fixed blade um, without too many details, I guess maybe it makes sense. So this is one that I'm very, very much uh, excited about. And then they have a couple from, you know, they have one from Dylan Mallory. They have one from Ostop Hell. They have one from uh, Lundquist, you know, some of the some of the usual suspects. And I don't mean to gl glaze over them like they're not interesting. They're all interesting and they're all beautiful in their own right. Uh, but things that we've, you know, not foreign concepts, but uh, one that I thought, another one that I thought was pretty cool that they're coming out with is a version of the Synergy. That's kind of this classic Jim O. Young design. Jim O. Young uh, designed the Synergy, I mean, I don't really know, uh, but ages ago, like in the 2000 and then single digits. Uh, I remember it being advertised on the back of Tactical Knives magazine, um, you know, when I lived in Brooklyn. So that was a long time ago at this point. And this is when flippers were new. It was like, it had an aluminum body, but but it was this shaped knife. And uh, two years ago, we took on the Synergy and uh, sort of resurrected this design and made some premium versions of it. Uh, the Synergy, uh, which was or I'm sorry, the mini Synergy and the Synergy 2. Synergy 2 is like a three and a half inch blade. The mini Synergy was just at three inches. Well, the Synergy 3 by Civivi comes in right between the two of those in terms of size with a 3.24 inch blade. Uh, but it features that beautifully upswept um, blade there, kind of Persian-y, kind of Tanto-y. Um, you know, traditional Japanese Tanto style. And then it's got the concentric circles milled into the handle radiating out from the pivot, which to me is just, man, it's so fetching. I love it. I think it's, uh, I think it's really cool. And I love the synergy, uh, uh, in history, even though <laughs> my history on it is a little sketchy, of course, but uh, I love that it's been around a long time. And I love that it was a design kind of like when, when uh, it was a design that was pulled out of the crypt basically and, uh, and resurrected. And so I like that they're making a, a, a within reach version of it because the Wii knives aren't, aren't within reach for everybody, but Civivi uh, makes knives that are, are, 
in reach for more people. So I'm excited to see that. And it's at a decent size at 3.24 inches. Not exactly my wheelhouse, but, uh, you know, a wheelhouse. And I can get I can get with that for certain certain blades. The last one from this uh, eight debut, uh, eight knife debut, 2021 debut from Civivi is the Ben Peterson designed baby banter. We all know Ben Peterson from uh, well, originally from Blade HQ. Uh, what is up, guys? You know him. Uh, very, well, seems like a very nice guy. I've never met him. Uh, he could be real. He could be bad news, but I don't think he is. Uh, ben seems like a really great guy and has, uh, through the years that he spent at CRKT and then also as head of, uh, what was it, video marketing maybe, at Blade HQ, he really developed a strong uh, taste for knives. And what I mean by that is he had a, a very opinionated about what made a great knife for him. And these are just things I'm remembering off the top of my head. He liked a knife that he could extend his forefinger um, down the blade and, and have it touch the tip for close in detail work. And uh, he also liked a deep carry clip. If I remember correctly, he loved the color blue. That's why the original banters were originally in blue. And, um, what else was it? Jimping. And he loved finger choils. I do remember that. However, the first banter that he designed with the three inch blade did not have a choil in it. And I always thought that was a little suspect or not suspect. I just thought it was interesting because that was one of his, um, one of the, his stipulations for the perfect knife. So here we have the Civivi baby banter with a 2.34 inch blade and look at that 50, 50 choil. There it is. You can see a little jimping on the choil too for extra purchase encryption when you're, when you're cutting things. So this looks like a, I'll say it, a cute little knife. And this one is tapped and slotted for left or right hand carry. Um, for me, that's not important. Uh, even when I carry on the left side, I keep the clip on the right side. Um, just in case you wanted to know or get me a Christmas gift uh, or birthday is sooner, just so you know. Uh, but it is nice to see that he's thinking of lefties. Uh, I, I know that they are out there. My sister is one of them. And uh, so maybe I'll get this for her birthday. Who knows? Uh, but I really like that they took the original banter and they're keeping that um, on the Wii side. But again, uh, taking, taking, using their Civivi brand to come out with something uh, just a little bit more um, specific. And that's what this is, a little 2.34 inch baby banter with a choil and a bulbous blade. And I like it. So there you have it. Uh, that's that's it. Civivi, Civivi knives. Uh, there are so many others coming out with new knives that uh, uh, we could mention, but I think that's all that's all I'm going to mention this time. Um, still to come, we take a look at my Blade Show haul. Uh, that's what I'm really excited to get to, you know, show you all the cool things I got. And like I said, uh, boy, it's a lot more than I expected because uh, I expected to, to get nothing and uh, and be disciplined. But <laughs> I should have known better. And also, we'll take a look at a, at a couple of new acquisitions before I even went to Blade. It's like uh, kind of when it rains, it pours. There were there was about a month there where I, uh, you know, I was just kind of not getting any thing new and then and then some stuff came in and then i went to blade show and got some stuff and then when i came back there was something here so i'm gonna show it all i'm gonna show it all off tonight uh but first let's dig you know before we dig into this this hearty meal over here please be sure to like comment subscribe i mean really hit the like button hit it uh subscribe hit the notification bell that lets you know when new videos we make are uploaded um Hopefully that, that system works. It doesn't always work on my end uh, for the people I view, but it's not going to work if you don't push it. And also be here tomorrow night for Thursday Night Knives, our weekly live stream, where you have an opportunity to join the always fascinating conversation live and on screen, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on YouTube. That's Thursday Night Knives, right here, 10 p.m. Eastern, every Thursday night. 
The GetUpside app is your way to get cash back on your gas purchases. GetUpside is an app you put on your smartphone, and whenever you need to get gas, search your area for savings, claim your discount, fill up your tank, and then take a picture of the receipt with your phone. And that's it. You've just got cash back. Visit theknifejunkie.com forward slash save on gas to get the app and start saving. Again, that's theknifejunkie.com slash save on gas. So before I left, you know, I'm always reaching out to people, knife makers and and uh, reviewers and individuals to come on the show, people that make interesting knives, people who have interesting takes on knives. So I reached out to the guys at Finch, Finch Knife Company. I've had the Finch Runtley for, well, over a year, I guess now. And I've always loved that little knife. And uh, it's got so much character. And um, I reached out to Finch, see if they wanted to come on the show. They said yes. Let's get you a couple of knives. And, you know, what am I going to say? No. So I said, oh, okay, let's get me some knives. And they sent them to me, and, and they they uh, arrived while I was in Atlanta. And so I came home to these, you know, and uh, it was really nice and very nice of these gents to, uh, to send me these two knives. And I'm really, um, I'm impressed with them. What can I say? Um, they're very cool. So let me just start. Uh, the first is the Finch Holiday. Uh, not sure if you've seen this, you probably have, but it's a beautiful sort of retro modern style flipper. Retro modern to me because it's got a badge or a, a, a shield uh, where most traditional slash slip joint style knives have a shield. And uh, incidentally, these guys are uh, also have a watch background. So these, I'm told, I've never actually, um, I've never actually tried or thought to to try, but I'm told that these have a little bit of lume in them and that they glow in the dark. But also, look at the the bolsters on both ends. You know, we've seen a lot of modern knives with bolsters on the front end, but when you have them both here, uh, bookending this this uh, nice inlay of micarta, it just has that sort of retro feel, but you look at it, it's a beautiful modern um, modern style flipper in this wonderful execution. I mean, it's like really nicely built, very solid, very stout. And actually, uh, you know, the, the liners are not, if you look in here, the liners are not milled out, so it has a substantial weight and uh, just a great looking blade. That, that, this is a blade shape that I love. Um, this Warren Cliff sheep's foot kind of thing. Um, I guess it's a Warren Cliff, or is it a sheep's foot? Can't tell. I don't know exactly. I always think of a Warren Cliff as having a sharp angle right here on the spine, and this is a gradual curve down to a perfectly straight edge. And uh, th yeah, so this is the Finch Holiday. Look at that nicely executed milled pocket clip. Beautiful micarta. It's a bolster lock, meaning you only see the lock. It's basically a frame lock with an with an inset here, or with a um, yeah, with a with an inlay, I should say. Uh, but the only place you see the lock is on the bolster here. So this is a really nice knife, and I'm glad to have this in addition to the uh, the Runtley for my conversation uh, with with. Uh, I'm speaking with Spencer from from uh, Finch, and I'm glad to have a kind of a wider selection than just the Runtley. This one too has great character, a lot of character in this knife. Something I really like is this jimping here on this sort of subtle flipper. It really helps in shooting it out there. It's quite sharp too. I just kind of ran into that there. All right, so that is the Holiday from Finch. I believe they come in a number of different uh, handle materials. I very much like the micarta, just like I very much like the micarta on this other one they sent me. They sent me two knives. Very generous. Thank you, guys. Very appreciated. This one is the Cimarron, and it's got this awesome gray on the outside, yellow on the inside micarta. To me, I don't know what that reminds me of, but I love that color combination kind of like the bright orange and uh, hunter green combination. Something about it, 
I just love. To me, this is sort of retro looking too. Uh, you've got this nice milled pocket clip here. You've got, uh, I'm not sure what this backspacer is. Maybe it's aluminum. I'm not sure. An incredible action. And this nice upswept but flat spined blade here. So it's not a very broad blade, but it's quite sharp at the edge. Um, this is not a hollow grind. It kind of looks like a hollow grind when you look at the plunge here. The plunge grind is curved, and sometimes that's indicative of a hollow grind, but not in this case. It is very sharp. It is very, very sharp. And, uh, and of course, you've got an incredible point right there. So this is the uh, Cimarron. It's got incredible action. It's, it's uh, even smoother than that holiday. And uh, I look forward to carrying this. Uh, again, like I said, I had just got, got it, so I have not had a, much of a chance to uh, carry it. As a matter of fact, I, I haven't carried it yet. But I think this will make a great, especially a nice summer carry, because uh, this is very, very light, even though the liners here also are not milled out. So I do look forward to carrying that with shorts, uh, in shorts and such. Thank you, gents, again, for the uh, Finch Cimarron and the Finch Holiday. Very appreciated. Now, before, uh, before I left, this arrived a few days before I left, and I've been carrying it around and just playing with it and holding it for that whole period. <laughs> it's really cool and very unusual. This is the Wingard Wearables Quill. And you say, Wingard Wearables, they make tomahawks. They do. They make these really cool ergonomic tomahawks. They have two. I have one of them. Uh, it's called the Empress. And it, that's sort of a spontoon hawk, a small spontoon hawk. And then they have a larger uh, bladed hawk uh, for chop, you know, more chopping kind of things. But it also has a spike on the back and is also ergonomically built to, to sit against your body. That one's called the back ripper. But this one, uh, the quill, is an interesting piece that um, Zach Wingard, he's the, uh, he's the proprietor and owner of the, of the company. He and his wife actually both own and run the company. And his wife was talking about how there are very few self-defense items made for women by women. Uh, most of the self-defense items made for women are created by men who basically put pink and purple on things that they make for men. And, oh, here, here, here's a, it's a lady's gun. Here, we'll just make it pink. Or here's a lady's knife. We'll just put some pink scales on it. Well, she wanted something more specific uh, that a woman could carry that, that might uh, emulate jewelry. Emulate? Is that the right word? Might, might uh, be evocative of jewelry, we'll say. And so she designed this uh, piece of um, well, what this is, is steel that's been, um, what do you call it? Forged. And I got, I got to tell you, I got to tell you, I'm going to put a little break here and tell you people that I just saw a creepy crawly just run across my basement floor and it, and it gave me goosebumps. Ugh. Uh, but anyway, uh, she designed this, uh, quill to fit behind the ear. As you can see, it's ear shaped, right? And you just kind of fit it over your ear and uh, you can wear it to the concert, you know, and then if someone hassles you, you pull it out and look at what you got. You've got a punch in your hand that fits perfectly in your hands, in your gripped fist, like this, almost like a punch dagger. And they um, did a lot of research and development as they do on all their products and uh, forged it and, and file it so that it has it's faceted. It's got, it's, it's diamond in cross section so that it doesn't turn in your hand. It, it really nestles and fits really nicely in hand. And it, they, you've got a number of different ways to carry that, uh, to, to deploy this. You can put it in your fist like this. You can put it in your fist like this for like a sort of hammer fist blow. Or you can hold it like this for sort of a, a, um, a sideways kind of they call it a haymaker grip um and, and it doesn't it doesn't move it doesn't turn and it's just very simple and i have found that it's uh 
easy to carry if it's uh, in my belt. And then I just, I put this part, I put this, this uh, shorter curve over my belt. And then this goes into the little coin pocket of my jeans or of my whatever I'm wearing, if it has a coin pocket. A lot of my khakis actually have coin pockets too. And uh, it just rides right there and it's, it's, it's right there, good to go if you need it. Um, Zach of Wingard Wearables also talks about how it has many other utility uses. I have not uh, used this for anything um, utility-esque yet, but I love its potential as a self-defense, as just a low-profile self-defense uh, implement. So I got this um, and I got my wife one. They make three versions three sizes. This is the original. They make a thinner one, same size, but thinner. I got that one for my wife. Um, it's better for smaller hands. And then they make a, a one that's better for big giant meat hook kind of hands. So I got one for me, one for my wife. When you put them together, they make a heart. And I got them for our anniversaries, uh, among the other things we did. But um, so there it is, the Wingard wearables quill. I love that thing. Cool little implement. Okay, so now I get to Blade Show, and of course, I'm not going to buy anything uh, except about eight items. <laughs> and the first thing I bought, um, I wasn't too far into the show, and uh, I come across this guy, um, can't remember his first name, but I will once I get him on the show. And uh, his company is Hayes USA. And uh, I come I come up to his table first because I see he's got some folding Pical style knives. And I'm like, ooh, you know me, I like Pical style knives. And it's always cool to see a folder uh, folding Pical. And uh, so I, I walk up to him and we're talking for a while. This guy's very interesting. He, he was a um, product designer of really high-end products, um, making uh, designs and, and um, features for for huge like mansiony style houses mansiony uh is is a word mansion like places like he designed a pool that moves up and down to a, a variable depth pool basically uh not just one with a shallow end and a deep end but something that where the floor moves and he makes he's designed all sorts of crazy stuff and one of the things he really likes is knives so he started making knives but the thing that really caught my eye after after talking to him for a little while was this little piece of titanium. This happy little fellow is a collar stay knife. So this fits in that little pocket on the back of your dress shirts where you slide a collar stay, you know, to keep the collar stiff. And uh, it fits in there with this with this little. Uh, uh, tip protector so you don't it doesn't ruin your shirt and uh, it's undetectable by a metal detector apparently uh, because it's titanium it's very light actually really light just about as light as a collar stay I had some brass ones once so this is lighter than the brass collar stays and it's sharp and pointy and if you needed it for something it would be there right there under your collar. So I thought that was very interesting. It reminded me of those old World War II OSS lapel daggers and different uh, small um, uh, cutting and stabbing implements that the OSS, the precursor of the CIA, had for its agents that it's sewed into its clothing and uh, for last ditch self-defense. I thought that was really cool. Great idea. Collar stay. It's like a little sheath you know, that little pocket there is like a little sheath just waiting to be filled with something sharp. And this gentleman, I think his name was John, but Mr. Hayes USA thought up this great idea. Collar stay, little knife. So I had to get that. So there we go. Here, I'll do this. And then I can fit that in right there. The collar stay knife by Hayes USA. I asked him if he wanted to come on to the show, as I did many people who I thought were doing really interesting things. And he said yes. So I will be reaching out to him uh, as I wend my way down the list. And uh, and we'll have him on the show and talk about the stuff that he does. Uh, next is a, oh, I forgot to show you something that actually uh, I got before, right before I went to Blade. But I saw that he had these at Blade. And when I say he, I mean Levon of the Knife Nuts podcast. 
he was uh, at the table with Brian Nadeau for um, the Sharp by Design table. As you know, they're both on the Knife Nuts podcast, and uh, they do a lot of uh, collaborative uh, work on getting Brian's uh, awesome Sharp by Design knives out there. And uh, Levon has been uh, has started up this importing business where he's importing knives from Russia, uh, cool and interesting knives from Russia and selling them. So uh, I was like, hmm, I better support a fellow podcaster and I better buy one of his knives. But really, I got it because look at this thing. So this is designed by Ivan Braganets, who's a famous uh, Russian designer. I know uh, Epic Snuggle Bunny uh, loves his knives and has in the past collected his custom pieces. This is designed by him. This is all titanium, as you probably have already guessed. Uh, very light, shockingly light, uh, because it's nicely pocketed out, which I'll show you. But the reason I got this is, look at this blade. This blade has a giant fuller uh, down both sides. And inside the fuller, it's this or sort of rough texture. I'm not sure what you call that. It's it's rougher than orange peel. Um, I'm not sure what you call it. But anyway, it's really, I think it's beautiful. It really caught my eye when I saw him showing it off on Instagram. And um, so I reached out and, and got on that list nice and early. And apparently he's had... Uh, half of this batch coming in from Russia stuck in customs. Luckily I was in the, in the first part of the order that didn't get stuck. Uh, hopefully uh, all you other guys have gotten yours by now. Um, but that stinks. I know that's very, that must be very frustrating to, to deal with not only American customs, but Russian customs, I, I guess. So if you take a look at the pivot, you've got a really cool design there. I'm guessing that's a, uh, the Crystal K. So the company is Crystal. The model is Aurora. The designer, Ivan Braganets. This is S35VN, number 37 of 160. And uh, extremely sharp. I mean, really hideously sharp. Hideous meaning good. And then this excellent action on bearings. Here's something that I really love. It Coming out, it is so, so smooth, so quick. And then going back in, it doesn't just drop shut. Some people just absolutely adore the drop shut. And I do sometimes. But what I also love is gently guiding a very smooth uh, action, smooth blade back into a detent where you hear this here. I just love that. It's got a really nice, really nice action. And Going out, it feels like a, you know, uh, any high-end um, bearing flipper. And going back in, it feels kind of like a super smooth Sabenza. And I just love it. I also love all this grip milling in the side and uh, cool pivot. Interesting design. To me, it looks Russian. I, I swear Russian knives, just like Polish knives and and uh, South African knives, they they have a look all their own, and I feel like you can identify them, even though each designer is doing different things. So uh, this is the Crystal Aurora uh, that I got from Levon of Knife Nuts and his new importing um, uh, company, I guess, or effort or whatever he's doing. He's, he's, been, uh, he's been importing some pretty cool knives from Russia. So definitely give him a follow on Instagram, because that's going to be the best way to keep abreast of what he has coming out. Next is not my knife, unfortunately. This, or well, fortunately, let me put it this way, because I'm a good brother. I got this for my brother, Vic, for his upcoming birthday. And um, I, I sent him a text. I said, I, I got you something at Blade Show, but I'm going to be blabbing about it on a few podcasts. I'm going to make a close-up video of it and this and that. Do you want me to tell you what it is right now, or should I tell the world first? And he said, tell the world. So here you go. This is the AD 20.5. And, man, you should have seen, if you weren't at Blade Show, you should have seen the Andrew, uh, the Demco Knives booth. It was, man, in the morning. So uh, in the morning, he would have some customs, hand-ground customs there uh, for sale, and people 
ran. Uh, I, I, I didn't see this with my own eyes, but someone was telling me that people were sprinting to get to his counter when they opened up the doors to get their hands on some of his custom versions of the uh, Shark Lock featuring AD20. Well, this is the Shark Lock featuring production version of the Demco Knives AD20.5. And it is astounding. It's made in Taiwan, OS 810 steel, which is very nice steel, a very serviceable, sharp, uh, easy to get sharp, it stays sharp quite a while, very stainless, you know. Um, this is the upgraded uh, steel that um, Cold Steel has been using on some of their uh, knives here. But, but the real bell of the ball here is the shark lock. This shark lock is such an amazing, um, well, what can I say? You all know it's an amazing innovation as well as just a great fidgety, uh, wonderful uh, action to have. So this, sorry, I can't do it very well with my left hand. This is uh, in Grivery here or, or FRN, very nicely textured and uh, they have a clip point and then something they call a shark's foot, which is a um, sort of sheep's foot, sort of modernized looking sheep's foot. And I really went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, which I should get because I already have the 8020 in clip point, but I love his clip point so much. I just decided my brother would probably like the clip point better too. And uh, man, what a, what a handsome knife this thing is. So, I would like to get uh, both this and the shark's foot, but you know, I, I figure discipline <laughs> is not buying two. So I didn't buy two of them because I know how I am and I will just carry the bigger version of it anyway. And I would probably leave this in the drawer um, in, in deference to the big version. So I have the big version. I'm gonna keep myself happy with that for now. But here it is, the AD20. Now I got to talk quite a bit to John Demko, Andrew's brother, who um, runs the business for, for uh, you know, pretty much runs the business and, you know, uh, consults with design stuff, but also worked with him when he was working at Cold Steel. And uh, we had a great conversation and, uh, well, a couple of great conversations. And so he's going to be coming on the show. Not sure when it'll air, but I'll be interviewing him at the end of this month, I think. Uh, or no, I'm sorry, the end of July, I believe. So I'm very excited to talk to him about, about everything um, that goes into taking a company and splitting from a very successful company and making sure they have their legs underneath them to become Demco Knives um, in earnest um, and not just be a production knife house. So the AD 20.5, what a great knife. Next, this gentleman, Dylan Grace, I've been following him on Instagram for a long time. He forges these really cool knives and then makes these beautiful uh, water fit leather sheaths that are just practically like Kydex. This one is a Warncliffe kind of scalpel. And uh, I, when I saw that he was there, I had to stop at his table and check out all of his stuff because I've been just been following him for so long and, and really digging his work that to see him there, I just wanted to see it up close and it's fantastic. And then I saw this one in particular, he had a number of these with, with a bunch of different handles, but this Buckeye Burl is just so beautiful to me. It's Buckeye Burl stabilized with, um, you know, uh, what do you call it? Uh, epoxy and, uh, it's just gorgeous. And this, uh, he does a number of different handle treatments, contouring some, some of them, some of them are more squared off. This one looks beautiful and feels beautiful in hand and is a very useful style blade shape. You know, I'm, I dig this, this kind of uh, Warncliffe style blade. And I've always wanted uh, the street scalpel by Topps Knives, but it was always just a little bit too thick for the purpose, as far as I'm concerned, if you're going to have a little stashable scalpel-like knife, uh, it shouldn't be, you know, three eighths of an inch thick. And this just hit all the notes correctly, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, beauty, 
handmade-ness and uh, looking handmade, but just refined and super sharp and beautiful, really beautiful. So um, I got this Dylan Grace knife and um, he's going to be on the podcast as well. He agreed to come on. So uh, pretty much everyone I'm showing you has been on or will be on because uh, that's kind of how I work. Like, oh, I really like your knives. Let's talk about them. And uh, people generally, uh, generally tend to be pretty open to that. Uh, next, I just was walking, leaving the first day, and these caught my eye. Like I stopped and turned and checked out this guy's work, S&W Metalworks. I can't remember where he's out of, uh, but if you look very closely, I know he's not out of Africa, but if you look very closely on here, his little logo is one of those African throwing knives, which is pretty interesting. He had a range of, he had slip joints, um, uh, a tactical style EDC, and he had some beautifully forged kitchen knives there, uh, which I think is his real bread and butter. But this is a design he stumbled upon, and it's a clever little slip joint design. It's a folded over piece of metal for the handle, piece of mild steel, uh, Cerakoted here in purple. And, uh, and then the spring on this, you know, we've seen that we've seen variations of this, but I really like it. Uh, the spring is part of the blade. And uh, we've never seen it quite exactly like this. So I just stopped dead in my tracks. We, we struck up a conversation and uh, I left his table with this in hand. Of course, I did pay for it. But uh, anyway, I have this bad habit of saying, I'm going to take this. And then people are like, no, you're not. <laughs> you're not going to take it. You're going to pay for it. So I paid for it and I made it my own. And uh, so this, these uh, little lugs here snap into this little, these divots, and that's what holds it open. It's very sharp. And that uh, non-locking lock, if you will, is quite stout, quite strong. And uh, I just love this. It's like a little shop knife or something. Uh, it is a bit heavy. This mild steel um, handle is a bit heavy. So it's not something I'm going to be too apt to pocket that much. But this is like the perfect desk knife for me uh, to leave out. And I, I call it a shop knife. I don't really do shop stuff. But, you know, I do a lot of crafty things uh, with my girls and just in here anyway in this room. So this is perfect for that. S and W Metalworks. Next, I went in, I just dropped in to say hi to Joseph Vero, and I walked away with a synapse. Oh my goodness gracious. So it's really, really great to see a knife like this. I, I also noticed this at the Koenig table with the Arius, a knife that is so deserving of the hype it gets. This thing is just incredible. I was talking about fall shut action before. Well, this is one that on which I really appreciate that fall shut action. And it's just because it shows how beautifully engineered this thing is. I opted for it uh, with the um, natural untreated canvas micarta. And it's gotten a little dark there and there because I was wearing it with brand new jeans, carrying this in, in brand new jeans. But um, I don't. I don't know. I don't. I can't say enough about how great this knife is. It's a bolster lock. It is. Uh, so you see the bolster lock there. This titanium. Everything about it is extremely handsome. But look at this flipper tab. I mean, we talked about this when he was on the podcast, and I, you know, I, I could see that it was working fine when he was flipping it, and I could see in other people's video that it works fine, but until you get it in hand, it's kind of hard to understand how well this thing flips just from that tiny little nubbin or just tiny protrusion of the tang there. Um, you know, sort of in the, uh, the early Quaken, uh, Boker Quaken days, people were modding, modding them to turn them into flippers. And they were, they were grinding away this part of the, uh, of the handle revealing a little bit of the tang. So you could grab the tang and, well, it's kind of the same concept. And to me, I, I always thought that was very precarious. Like, how, how is that going to work? And I'll tell you, on this knife, 
with Joseph's uh, design and engineering, it works incredibly. This is an M390 blade. Uh, the only branding is right there on the spine. Very classy. It was nice to meet him and his wife, helping him run the business. They were doing a bang-up job and a bang-up business. And, uh, well, I'm so happy I got this. And look at this. He is also a knife lover and knows that people like to spidey flick. So he put a little divot there just for you spidey flickers to stick your finger in there and shoot that thing out. So the Vero Synapse, well, well worth the, the hype and uh, very excited to have this. I was not expecting to leave the show with a Vero engineering knife. Just wasn't, you know, necessarily on my radar. And I got my hands on it. And I was like, whoa. Uh, my radar, I need to recalibrate my radar. And he's got some larger models. I'm sure you're aware of all of them. And uh, man, they are sweet. He's got an integral, which uh, I didn't even bother to, you know, that I fell in love with, but they didn't have any. And uh, they didn't have any, you know, they were sold out of those. And then they have another one coming out. That's a Tanto. That's really cool. I mean, that just, He's doing great stuff. All right. So, and then on the second day, on Saturday, I, I was just about, you know, exhausted beyond belief. And someone let me know that there was a second room, a whole nother room. Now, of course, not as large as the main room, but I was like, I got to go check that out. I walked in to the main room and the entrance was kind of in the center. Like there's like maybe four or five rows in that direction, four or five rows in that direction, booths and tables. But the very first thing I saw, it was like across a crowded room. It was like faded. Uh, was this knife. I will pull it out of the sheath to show you. This beautiful Pical style knife, double-edged, fixed blade, this, this really... Uh, cheerful micarta it's uh, red and orange -ish yellow and this incredible how, how big is this uh two, three, about three and a half inch wait one two three and a half three and a half inch double-edged pical blade wow and i was looking at it as i was coming to it. i mean like my our eyes locked and i walked towards it and as i did i was like Man, that looks just like a, a Dirk Pinkerton design. And then I was like, and the one next to it looks like a Dirk Pinkerton. And then I look up and I'm like, and this guy looks like Dirk Pinkerton. And of course it was him. And uh, so it was great to meet him in person too. Um, he came on the show and talked about working on these style of knives. It was, it was uh, something that was uh, somewhat fresh at the time. And... Uh, Oh man, I jumped on this. I was this was a knife where I was worried that someone else was going to pick it up and buy it before I had the chance. So I told him like I'm going to I'm going to take that knife, but can I look at the rest and yeah, he said yes, of course, but he had a bunch of really nice fixed blades that he had made. Um, some of them smaller EDC style like this, a couple of them real big like he had a Jambaya, like a modern version of a Jambaya and um some other cool kind of um, ethnically um, uh, inspired knives. And, um, but this one, man, oh, love it. I love this one so much. So I, I've been carrying it. Um, well, I carried it once. Um, besides at the show, I carried it once since I've been back. And uh, it's the only thing that's kicked the voodoo out of my, out of my waistband. And they both ride similarly well. This is a little bit thicker little bit heavier but that being said it's that's still not much and i just have it on my on my right hip three o'clock and you can just pull it right out and you have these two very capable edges at your uh, at your disposal this is nitro v there's a uh, dirk's maker's mark dp very very impressed with his his knives are immaculate just beautifully ground and just crisp everything crisp the lines the, the overall profiles, everything about them, they're just really nice. Very, very, very sharp. This thing is ridiculously sharp, both edges. And, uh, and rather obtuse, you know, angles, but very, very sharp. 
So that's the Dirk Pinkerton pick call. And then the one last thing to show you, well, that's actually, I have one, one other thing. Uh, before I get to that, that uh, thing, I went to the attention to detail mercantile um, uh, booth to talk with Doug and check out his mark, his model ones. And man, uh, have they come a long way since I got mine and mine is awesome. I love mine. You know, I, I've shown it off and talked about it a lot, but he's, he's added bearings and just, just um, practice making that knife over and over. They're so sweet. And he does all these different uh, surface textures and now he's doing inlays. So they have a modern, you know, they're, they're a modern context. They're, they're modern frame lock titanium flippers in three different sizes, small, medium, large, and two different basic blade profiles. But they have a real, um, they, they have a tip of the hat to the past with their, a lot of them have jigging, a lot of them have little uh, uh, shields, um, you know, different shaped shields embedded in them. And uh, I, I wasn't there to buy one of those, that, 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 would have, uh, that would have blown my budget, but it's well worth it, believe me. Uh, but his uh, partner, Stacia Jennings, uh, was also there, and she does the software, they call it, I think. Um, and she makes Hanks and does some other cool stuff. And um, they're both vets also, um, veterans um, of the wars, etc. She from the Army, he from the Marine Corps. And she, made, she makes these really nice... Um, knife rolls. So I bought this from her. I mean, this is like velvet on the inside. And then this, this, uh, this beautiful sort of Japanese inspired material on the outside. And so I bought this and put all of my new purchases in, and then you roll it up and then you tie it with this, these nice leather thongs. So I was very happy to get this and support not just the knife side of attention to detail mercantile, but also the soft side, the softer side. All right, last but definitely not least, I got a tomahawk. Yes, I got a tomahawk by Ed Roosh. Uh, I'm sorry, Elmer Roosh. Elmer Roosh is a renowned, world-renowned uh, forger of um, axes and tomahawks. And um, boy, he really has this down. Uh, <laughs> So one of the things in speaking with Zach Wingard uh, of Wingard Wearables, who, who will be uh, featured in an upcoming interview, one of the things you really want out of a tomahawk if it's for fighting is lightweight. So we have a lot of great tomahawks on the market right now that are heavier, they're stouter, they're full tang uh, pieces of metal that are great for utility, you know, bashing in doors and smashing, you know, uh, hard utility, the kind of things that soldiers come up against. Uh, but I, I'm interested in this sort of Northeast woodland, you know, pre United States, Native American, you know, last of the Mohican kind of tomahawks. And uh, Elmer Roosh is a master. And um, I was looking for a tomahawk uh, and looked at a bunch of them and hadn't come across him. And then I bumped into Andrew Demko, who's got a thing for tomahawks uh, after the first day show. And he had two, uh, both by Elmer Roosh. And he's like, oh, yeah, oh, you want to buy a tomahawk? Check this guy out. So I wrote down his name and I went right to his table the next day and was really hoping for a light spiked tomahawk. And wouldn't you know, they he had one. <laughs> so this one has a 16-inch haft and uh, it's American Hickory very light and you also want something that's not friction fit you know that slides up the handle but it's hung they call it hanging uh, but it's hung on the top and wedged in with the same kind of uh, wood so that it all expands and contracts at the same rate and you would be surprised if you had this in hand how light it is and uh, you know as you know I get in tomahawk fights you know on a, on a weekly basis and this is really gonna up my game um, of course, that is a joke, but uh, I am so incredibly excited to have an Elmer Roosh. Uh, since since buying it, I've I've realized how you know well respected and you know how great these are. I mean, I know I can feel how great this is, but people who know a lot more about tomahawks than I 
uh, worship the guy. So very, very excited to have this as the crowning uh, purchase of my of my Blade Show time. Uh, you will be seeing that on the wall. It's already it's already got a spot ready for it. Wait, where is it? Right over here, right over my right shoulder on the wall. This tomahawk will live there. And unlike most of the knives up there, uh, this is not old and used in, in some sort of combat or during some sort of conflict, but it has the spirit of it. So it's going to hang up there and it's going to look great. <laughs> All right. Well, I've gone on long enough. Thank you so much for joining me on this. Uh, well, this recap, I guess, of Blade Show. I had such a great time, as uh, as I've said, and uh, I'm really happy with the things I picked up. Picked up. I didn't pick them up. I carefully, carefully curated their selection, and uh, I know my brother Vic's going to be happy with that. Uh, Demco AD twenty point five. I've gone on long enough. So if you like the show, please uh, subscribe and uh, comment, and be sure to share the video and spread the word, and Let's uh, let's get this uh, knife thing out there to those who don't know about it because it is exciting and uh, it's full of a lot of great people. So join us here tomorrow night for Thursday Night Knives. Join us here on Sunday for another great interview show. And then, of course, next Wednesday for another supplemental edition. For Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I am Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco saying, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, thenifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at thenifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Podcast.